Hi, guys. Aaron Dorr here with the American Firearms Association with a brief update, a recap on where we are right now in our fight to stop gun control here in Washington, D.C. I get it. It's a holiday weekend. We've been hammering your inbox and your social media feeds with updates for the last 10 days, basically nonstop. But, guys, we're in a huge fight right now here in D.C., and if we're going to stop gun control, we have got to keep the pressure on regardless of what day it is. So here's a brief recap on where we stand in Washington, D.C. We all know the radical left has been waiting for this moment for a very long time. They hoped to pass gun control a year and a half ago when Biden first got installed in the White House, but they could not get the votes in the Senate. So while Pelosi can pass gun control in the House, every one of their agenda items have come to a screeching halt in the Senate. They've been waiting for this for a long time. And now with the Buffalo, New York shootings and Uvalde, Texas shootings, this is their chance. And they're going to use the blood of these dead American children to try to advance their agenda as fast as they possibly can. They are shameless and they're not going to stop. If they can get the votes to pass gun control, they're going to. Now, for quite some time now, we've seen the Republicans in the Senate in the minority, doing the right thing. They've been stopping gun control, fighting back, and holding that line. As we've warned you guys, though, this entire time, if we saw, God forbid, a mass shooting in America, we could see Republicans begin to betray us very fast. It always happens this way, folks. And right now, it is happening today as you watch this in Washington, D.C. Last week, late last week, Mitch McConnell... Republican leader in the Senate gave permission to members of their conference to engage in negotiations with Senate Democrats on gun control. We all know what happens when the Republicans negotiate. We lose, gun owners lose, America gets screwed over, and Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden get to advance their agenda. As of right now, we have 12 Senate Republicans who are engaged in these sham negotiations. We've got Susan Collins in Maine. Mitt Romney from Utah, Pat Toomey out of Pennsylvania, Roy Blunt from Missouri, Rob Portman, Ohio, Lindsey Graham, South Carolina, Bill Cassidy, Louisiana, Mike Braun from Indiana, Tom Tillis, North Carolina, John Cornyn from Texas, and Rick Scott and Marco Rubio, frankly, in Florida. Folks, the real danger here is that a bunch of those names, they're on their way out. They are retiring. Pat Toomey, he's about gone. Roy Blunt. He's about gone. Many of these names are Republicans who simply don't have a need to care anymore, and that makes them especially dangerous. Now, we're hearing a lot of questions from our members. What kind of bills might we see uh, on the floor of the Senate? One thing is clear for a fact. We know for sure we're going to see action in the House, in Congress, on red flag gun seizures very, very soon. That bill will almost assuredly pass in the House and be in the Senate very fast. Now, we all know what a red flag gun seizure is. Just a brief recap. Anybody can make up an allegation that you might be dangerous and ask a judge to take your firearms away by force. They do it in secret court hearings that you can't attend. And the first time you hear about it is when the cops come to your home to grab your firearms. This is the biggest threat we're facing right now in D.C., red flag gun seizures. Now, there's two kinds. There's a national, federal, top-down, national, federal red flag law. That's option A. But they're also working on option B. This is a Republican-led red flag gun seizure bill. And what we're, what we're being told, it's an NRA-supported red flag gun seizure bill. This is Senator Marco Rubio's bill. And what it would do is not pass a national red flag law, but would instead give state legislatures money bribing them with taxpayer dollars to pass red flags at the state level. And that way they can sit back as Senate Republicans and say, oh, we, we didn't pass red flag gun seizures. We're letting the states decide. Yeah, bribing them with hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money. It's a Republican-backed bill, which makes it much easier for Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden to get the votes they need to make this thing happen. 
Number one is red flags. Number two, universal background checks, a national gun database. We've all heard about this. It's HR8. It's passed the House a year ago. It's been languishing in the Senate ever since that time. That bill has been moved on to the Senate debate calendar by Chuck Schumer, and we're going to see a vote sometime very soon on universal background checks. Some people say, well, you know, if you have nothing to hide, what's the big deal? I hope everyone watching this video knows how foolish and how naive that approach is. This is not about good guys and bad guys. It's about giving Joe Biden and the radical left what they've always wanted, a list of every gun owner in America. It is a national gun owner registry. That's it. Make no mistake. And guys, if they get the votes on these two bills, everything else is on the table as well. Banning AR-15s banning 30 round magazines all of their normal agenda items will come into play if republicans cave in right now and give them what they want so while these are the two main threats we have everything is on the table if republicans cave in and wave the white flag now we're being asked by our members when when will this happen well this whole next week they're on leave they're on vacation in Congress. Now, that does not mean that the fight's not still going on. They're whipping votes right now, that is, they're counting votes right now on this vacation week to see who supports what style of gun control. So they're out this week. They're whipping votes this week on gun control. And they're going to come back the following week to begin to take action on stuff. We're going to see a vote early in that second week of June on at least a federal red flag gun seizure bill in the House. And then again, Chuck Schumer is in the same thing right now in the Senate. So we don't have a lot of time here at all. The week we have right now is very important to us to fire off emails, make your phone calls, and, and just flood, flood Congress with opposition to this gun control agenda. Beneath our video here, you've got pre-written emails, or you can go to stopredflags.com and send your emails into Congress. Our emails are automatic. It goes right to your senators, right to your congressmen, and tells them you're going to hold them accountable, Republicans or Democrats, if they vote for this garbage anytime down the road. It also says that there's no good version of a red flag gun seizure bill because Republicans are trying to say if they remove the ex parte hearing portion of the bill, that is, if they remove the secret proceedings of this bill and allow you to be there in court for this hearing, that that makes it okay. Our belief here at AFA is very simple. The idea of taking guns from American citizens who have never been convicted of anything, let alone a felony, is absolute tyranny. It is absolute tyranny, and we oppose any and every version of red flag gun seizures. We can, we must hold the line here. So that's your action item, is hit the link beneath this video, and, or go to stopredflags.com and contact your senators, contact your congressmen, and say, hold the line if you're a Republican. And if they're a Democrat, it's going to say, look, if you vote for this trash, your party and you personally will be held accountable in November. There are still vulnerable Democrats who are scared to vote on gun control even now. And their fear is that they may lose their job themselves. Think of uh, Raphael Warnock, for example, in Georgia. And that if, it, if, it, if it happens enough, they may lose their entire Senate majority. So we have a message for Democrats and Republicans, guys. Hit that link and take action, number one. Number two, we need your support. We need your financial support, your donations today to help us ramp up heat on the members of Congress. We're using text. We're using social media. We're using direct mail. We're using email. And our lobby presence in on Capitol Hill to fight back, help us. Please donate today. We need your help immediately. And I want to mention one last thing before we close this video out. I'm getting a lot of questions from people who are just anguishing over the loss of life in Buffalo and Uvalde, Texas, and asking the, the obvious question that we're all asking, what can we do? How can we stop this? Well, we don't have an answer for that entire conversation. It's much more than just simply a question about gun rights. But here's what we know. Evil resides in the hearts of men. It does not reside in pieces of plastic and metal in a firearm. Evil resides in the heart of men. 
and the same politicians now who have spent years, decades, saying that we can't have God in schools, saying there is no right from wrong, saying that little three-year-old boys can be girls and little girls can be boys, and filling our children with filth and perversion, hatred of our country, hatred for our founding fathers, hatred for themselves, and psychotropic drugs conspires to leave our children more desperate and absolutely more unable to deal with life than any time in history, perhaps. And so what we're seeing in these mass shootings is a multifaceted problem. It involves the church. It involves the family. It involves our schools. It is not a problem with guns. And this problem will not be solved with gun control. So if you're sitting here thinking to yourself, if the media is beating you down, if they're trying to cow you in a submission, if you think, you know, if we just gave up our AR-15s, this would go away. I'm sorry, it's not that easy. It's simply not that easy. This problem is far deeper. And the same politicians who have created those situations right now amongst our youth are trying to shamelessly use this same dynamic, these mass shootings, to now advance their ultimate agenda, which is to disarm the American people and leave us helpless in the face of their naked tyranny. We may never submit to this. We can never give in to this. If we do, our children and our grandkids be the ones who pay the price for generations to come. Folks, take a stand with us now. Sign your emails, donate, join the fight, share our content, help us fight back. We cannot lose this battle. If we lose our gun rights, there's no getting them back. We'll be right back.